what if I told you that you can make thousands of volts using parts that you can easily get from AliExpress for just a couple dollars and also put it together in probably about 10 minutes? Well, you can. That being said, please be careful when learning about high voltage. It can be dangerous to people and also to devices. So this is for educational purposes only. Please don't use this for anything else. I 3D printed this case that yes, it does look like it's from Minecraft, but it's for demonstration. So it should do the, do the trick. And this way we don't have to look at just components on a table inside this there's the battery, the power source, there's an on off switch in the back, there's a button, and then there's the high voltage module. And that's it. It's, it's that simple. So of course this is missing some important parts, but we'll get to that later. But for now, let's see what's inside this and uh, how you can make this for yourself. So let's start with the minimum required components that I used for this project. So I used a momentary push button, an on off switch, a holder for the lithium ion battery, then the lithium ion battery itself, and then the high voltage module. These you can buy either the quote unquote 400 kilovolt or 1000 kilovolt versions or both of them. But as you can see later, the claims of 400 kilovolts and 1000 kilovolts, they might not be accurate. But yeah, then we can ask ChatGPT to come up with a skip. Never mind, let's not ask ChatGPT for any schematics. I found this video on YouTube from the channel Diode Gone Wild, who took apart the high voltage module and then made a schematic. So if you're interested, here's the schematic of the high voltage module. Although we don't really need to know what's inside for this specific project. But if you're interested, go check out the video. It was really interesting. We can take that high voltage module and put it in our simple schematic that consists of a battery, an on off switch, a push button and the actual high voltage module just put together in series. So now that we have an idea of what components we need, we can design a case for the high voltage module. And although sometimes these kinds of high voltage generators are used for tasers, well, this is not one. This is just a demonstration of a high voltage generator. So after the rough drawing, we can measure the components and then move on to FreeCAD to model the thing we just drew. I didn't have super specific measurements and since the case is not that polished or it's just quickly drawn for this demonstration, I don't think I'm going to publish it, but you can make your own. It shouldn't take too much time, but you can use the video for help if you need it. After the modeling is done, we can 3D print it. I sent it to my printers and then waited a couple minutes and we had a case. I test fitted the components and I actually had to go back and redo the print since it was a little bit too small. And after that, I just hot glued the high voltage module and the battery holder, put the push button and the on off switch in its place. And then also hot glued the high voltage wires inside the case so that I can have some kind of control over the distance between the wires. So the distance between the wires matters because the circuit works by charging off the output voltage until it reaches its breakdown point. That depends on the distance between the wires. The bigger the distance, the higher the voltage, but also it has to charge for a little bit more to reach that voltage so that the arcing is going to be a little bit less frequent. That means you can control the voltage and frequency by changing the distance between the wires. 
there's a simple way to estimate the voltage. So for every centimeter, there should be about 10 kilovolts for the breakdown to happen. Now, when we measure our gap on this design, it's a little bit over one centimeter. So the voltage should be around the 10 kilovolt mark. The advertised 400 kilovolts would mean there's going to be a 40 centimeter arc, which is not going to be possible since that's bigger than the whole module. So the sellers do exaggerate these values a little bit. But anyways, that's enough science, so let's get back to building. Of course, there's not too much soldering, just connect the wires like in the schematic. Battery to switches and the switch to the plus wire on the high voltage module and the minus back to the battery minus. After taping the wires, it was basically ready for testing. And since the test went like this. We were ready to not put the case on because this is where I realized I don't have a charging circuit, which is a big problem when you're working with a lithium ion battery because uh, we don't want to drain it too low. And of course we want to charge it if it runs out of charge which in its current state is not possible. So I would have to add a charging module that also it would be nice if it had some protection features as well. Well, there exist quite many of these. Uh, for example, this TP4056 based chips, they're quite basic. They're not the best, but they're definitely cheap and easily available everywhere. And they have overcharge, over voltage or under voltage, many kind of protection features. And of course, you can also charge the actual battery, which is nice. So definitely add at least something like this. So your device is not just use it once and take it apart. So I just decided to temporarily take the battery outside the case on the handle, which is not too uncomfortable. So I can manually monitor the voltage and if it goes too low, I can charge it. Since I do have a battery charger, but not a charging module that I can just solder on this. So temporarily the battery is outside the case and I tried to make it look nice with some electrical tape. So yeah, in conclusion, would I recommend doing this at home? Well, no, uh, not the way I did it. I would either add the charging circuitry to the lithium ion battery, or if you don't have any and for some reason cannot access any, then at least put the battery somewhere where it's easily replaceable and you can monitor the voltage. Otherwise, this is at least a fun way to learn about high voltage. So if you want to try this, you can follow along with the video. You can get these components online and learn something new. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.